Hello, YouTubers. Dave out in Western Pennsylvania, USA. Virtual Organic Lab, which is marketed by uh, Beyond Labs, developed by chemists, uh, chemistry professors at BYU back around 2002. I'm using this to teach remotely Organic One Lab this summer because of the pandemic. And this is a very, very useful uh, platform in my estimation. And it can really help students to visualize the organic lab before physically being in one. And um, today I'm going to show you in this video uh, uh, Fisher esterification. One of the, probably in my estimation, one of the 10 most important synthetic reactions ever discovered. So uh, here you have a choice of alcohols and carboxylic acids. I will proceed over to the uh, shelf and I'll select uh, acetic, good old fashioned acetic acid. And uh, I'll offer it um, methyl alcohol, methanol. Now, check the round bottom and the blackboard. You can see up there the acetic acid and the methanol are shown. And you're not going to use really any solvent for this reaction. It's typically done in excess alcohol. Always note the time on the clock. You can adjust it to your time, but you can use the laboratory time there. And don't forget, you also have a notebook where you can re save uh, spectral data and record notes like TLC. You can save TLCs. Um, very, very good. I would normally have students look up the physical properties of the starting materials and the target molecule. And um, uh, is it a solid, is it a liquid? And uh, that can be very helpful. I uh, normally use this platform along with the Japanese Analytical Society's SDBS database, spectral database online. You can find it with Google. Excellent. And uh, they have uh, Proton C13, um, mass spec, infrared, even ESR, and uh, I use both. You can do qualitative uh, organic analysis with this platform, and I've uploaded a video illustrating that. So anyway, check your round bottom. You see both are up there on the blackboard. I'll drag it over to the plate. Uh, I would hook up a reflux condenser. I would attach a heating mantle. I'm L clicking on those. Uh, don't forget your nitrogen gas if you want. Note the time, 311, and let's get underway. Let's do a TLC. And nothing there yet. Ah, intentionally I did this. We didn't add a catalyst. You'll be waiting forever. Uh, they have the rates built in. So what do we do now? Well, we're going to abandon the experiment. Repeat what we were doing. Acetic acid. And uh, I'm recording this uh, April 8th, 2020, and uh, we've got a, a very nice thunderstorm going on while I'm recording this. Um, okay, here we'll use uh, acetic acid, and I'll place uh, methanol in there. Both are there. L drag. Don't forget your catalyst. I'll use sulfuric acid. And the three components are there. Now the reflux condenser. Now the heating mantle. Now the nitrogen gas. And we're underway. Let's do a TLC. Nothing there yet. Oh, but there's methyl acetate forming. So it's not being detected. And uh, let me move the clock ahead an hour. Let's check again. Nope, TLC is not going to help with this. So they must be looking for uh, fluorescence uh, using a UV lamp, and uh, the methyl acetate is not being detected. Let me go ahead now because we still have acetic acid and methanol. So I'll go ahead an hour. Ah, and then the reaction would be done. What was that, about two hours? Now you have sulfuric acid and the target molecule methyl acetate, as you can see the structure there. Click on the SEP funnel. In there we have the sulfuric acid methyl acetate. Add aqueous base for workup. Bottom layer is methyl acetate and water. Top layer is diethyl ether. Okay, so what we're going to do is take that bottom layer 
and we're going to take that over to the and I was going to bring it over to the evaporating dish crystallizing dish and it wouldn't allow it that wasn't the right thing to do so we'll do it again and we will select this time let's use this um, uh, phenyl acetic acid and we'll place in there uh, ethyl alcohol they're both there bring the round bottom over add the sulfuric acid three components there heating mantle reflux condenser nitrogen gas note the time on the clock do a TLC at the beginning and you can see we're detecting the two phenyl acetic acid you can save that to the notebook and if you open up the notebook there's the save TLC I'll exit out I'll click OK there because we saved it and uh, let's start the reaction we click the uh, green button there the stir button and we'll go ahead an hour you can see the product is done in an hour and what you have is sulfuric acid and ethyl 2 phenyl acetate the expected ester SEP funnel and since we have sulfuric acid aqueous sodium hydroxide lower layer is water top layer is the ethyl 2 phenyl acetate and diethyl ether now since it's a volatile solvent diethyl ether let's try bringing this top layer over to the dish and we were able to rotavap off the uh, diethyl ether leaving behind or put it in the hood and let the ether evaporate let's do a TLC of it yep there it is I'll save it and then click OK uh, let's do a, an FTIR nice ester stretch about 1735 reciprocal centimeters we'll save it click OK uh, C13 let's see oh they don't have a C13 better look it up in his SDBS let's change this to proton I clicked on the black there of the let's see if there's a proton nope so you're gonna have to look them up how about mass spec we'll bring that over there's your fragmentation pattern there's your molecular ion 164.0 and there's your base peak 91.095 and we'll save it click OK um, let's open the notebook and you can find all the data there if you click on your FTIR there it is and normally what I would do for students in beginning organic they would put down their name the date the time use the time in the lab or any time you enter at the beginning time zero you can go ahead minutes tens of minutes hours with some reactions if you go ahead too fast the glassware will explode and uh, so be cautious with trying to get a reaction done in you know in uh, by clicking on five hours sometimes the glass will explode and you'll have to do it over again but uh, there you have your notebook you would put the reaction purpose of the reaction in this case the sterification workup procedure the amount of time it took for the reaction to go to completion and uh, spectral characterization so I'm going to X that out and uh, I thank you for watching now when you go to exit you just click over there L click up here exit and I'm not going to save the notebook for, because that was only for demo purposes here click OK and then up here out and